Hello and welcome to this Angular internationalization tutorial brought to you by Localize. And in this video we are going to cover the following topics. How to set up Angular application and how to configure the built-in Localize module. We are going to see how to perform translations and provide metadata. How to work with pluralization and gender information. We are going to see how to uh, work work with Angular pipes, how to perform translations inside your components, and how to build the application and deploy it to production. So, we are going to start by creating a new Angular 9 application by saying ng new. And after that, we need to add a special localized package. This is a new step because, well, in the previous versions of Angular you did not need to do so. Uh, next, you should open the Angular JSON file and do some tweaks here. So, first of all, you should add a new section called i18n and inside you should provide a source locale which will contain, well, the original language of your application which is going to be English United States in our case and also you should add a locales key and in our case that's going to contain a single element RU which means Russian language and as a value you should provide a relative path where translations for this language are going to be stored. Next, let's also go to Architect Build Options and tweak the value for the output path. Next, let's proceed to configurations. And here let's add a new configuration called RU. Russian and the only option here should be localize RU, meaning that the application should be started with the Russian language set as the default one. And also we should provide a new section for the serve. Inside serve configurations we should say RU, browser target, and then the name of your application, build RU, so that you can uh, start your application with this language. Now let's see how to perform the actual translations and to do that we can create a new h1 header with an i18n attribute. So this is a special attribute that is recognized by the localized package and during the compilation it will be removed, but the contents of the tag will be replaced with the proper translations for the currently set locale. And note that this attribute uh, can accept translation description. For example, we can say that that's going to be a friendly welcoming message. And also it is possible to set the meaning of this translation. And to separate meaning and description, you should use this pipe character like this. Next we should create the translation files and to extract translations from your templates you can run a special command line tool that is called xi18n and next just provide the path to the directory that should contain your translations. So inside we are going to find a messages xlf file. Here we can see the translation unit tag and this tag contains a single translation. id is a translation identifier and it has a very special meaning. This id is generated for us automatically so you should not modify it here directly and we will discuss id in a moment. 
Next, the source tag contains the actual text that has to be translated. Next, inside the context group, you can see where exactly this translation is located, so where can it can be found. And also, there are two note tags that contain the description and the meaning of your translation. Next, we may copy the messages Excel file and rename the copy to messages.ru.xlf and it's going to contain Russian translations. Here we can provide the target for the translations, uh, so that's going to be всем привет in Russian, and also we can add a target language attribute for the file tag that's not required, but it's recommended, so the translation management systems like Localize can detect the language properly. Well, as I've already said, the translation ID has special meaning. The IDs are unique, and the command line tool XI18N generates them based on the combination of the source text and its meaning. And therefore, if you update the translation source or its meaning, it means that the ID will basically change. If you restart the application, then you are going to see that the message is not translated into Russian anymore, and that's because the ID has changed. And so to fix that, you should update the ID attribute inside messages RU and also update the source tag like this, and that's going to fix the problem. So, as you can see, having those auto-generated translation IDs is not very convenient, because they depend on the source text and the meaning, but it is possible to provide custom identifiers using a special prefix written as to add characters. So, after the description, we can say welcome, then extract our translations again, and as you can see, the ID is now set to welcome, and it is not going to change even if you update the source or the meaning. One thing to remember here is that you need to assign unique custom identifiers for different translations. Well, because if you provide the same IDs for different texts, then only the first translation will be extracted, and basically all other translations with the same ID will have the same values. Now let's uh, take a look at various use cases. Let's start with uh, translation attributes. So suppose we have a link and this link leads to our portfolio, and the link should be translated properly, but we also need to localize the URL and the title of this link. To do that, we should use a special attribute named iitnm dash, and then the name of your attribute that you would like to translate. Now let's extract everything as usual, copy your tags to messages are you, and just provide target to translate everything properly. Now let's take a look at how to perform a pluralization. The built-in localize module utilizes a special ICU message format. First of all, you provide the actual number or the variable that contains your number. Then you say plural, which is basically the name of the ICU expression, and then you should cover different cases. When the number is zero, we should say no task. When the number is one, we should say the actual number task. When there are few tasks, we basically say the value of our variable tasks, and the same for many, and the same for all other cases. So, for English, you can only provide zero 
one and many. But unfortunately in Russian things are a bit more complex. And therefore for Russian we need to provide more cases, specifically few and other. Now let's extract these translations and update the Russian translation in the following way. So we are providing the case when there are no tasks, when there is one task or when the count ends with one, next when there are few tasks, when there are many tasks, and when there is an other count of tasks, and that's it. Now let's just run the application again and make sure that everything is pluralized just fine. The next useful ICU expression is called SELECT, because it allows us to choose one of the translations based on some value. So, for example, it is very, very useful when you need to work with gender information. So, for example, we would like to display the gender of the current user and uh, suppose that uh, this information is uh, stored as a code. We would say gender code, which is going to be our variable. Then select is the name of the expression. Then if the gender code is zero, then we would like to say male. If it is one, we would like to say female. And if it has any other value, then we would like to say unknown. Also, I would like to create three methods that can be used to switch the gender, just like that. And also, let's display three buttons to call these methods. Now let's extract everything once again and note that two translations are created for us. The first translation is actually for the gender word, so let's translate it here and note that it contains the actual placeholder. This placeholder should not be modified anyhow, let's leave it be. And now let's proceed to the second translation unit, provide a target here and translate the male, the female and the unknown words. Now, what if you would like to do some translation, but without generating any tag? To do that, you can utilize an ng container, then provide an i18n attribute, and upon page display, this ng container will be gone, and you will have a plain text displayed without any also note that the built-in IIT module plays nicely with common pipes. To make them working fine, you should open app module TS, then add the following lines of code to register locale data for the chosen locale. You may proceed to your template and, for example, localize the date. For instance, we may use the full date format. And next, don't forget to create a new today variable, which is going to equal to date now. What would you do if you need to perform translations inside components? Uh, well, this can be done by using the localize function directly. And so, for instance, we can create a new company variable and a separate variable created by, which is going to call uh, localize like this. And it's going to use interpolation in the following way. Now let's use this variable inside the template, but unfortunately the translation will not be automatically extracted by the XI18N tool. So well, for now let's try to boot the server. 
and you are going to see a warning here no translation found for the following id so let's use this id inside our messages xlf file create a new translation unit like that now as for the source it should say created by and this ph here is basically a placeholder which will be replaced by the provided value and this placeholder should be written with an x tag with an id of ph next simply copy this translation unit to messages ru and provide the target so now our variable has the correct translation and also note that this localize function accepts a custom id a meaning and description well the format is the same but your meaning and description should be wrapped with colons like this finally let's add a language switcher to our application to do that let's introduce a new locales list variable and it is going to contain the language codes and the labels for English and for Russian. Now we can use this variable inside the template. Specifically, let's use mg4 and display links for each locale. Finally, we can deploy our application to production, for example, to Firebase. Uh, so first of all, you will need to install Firebase tools, create a new Firebase account if you haven't done so already. Proceed to the console. You can create a new Firebase project here, or you can do so inside the command line interface. Next, you should say Firebase login to actually log in locally then say firebase init to initialize a new project here uh, you should uh, say to either use an existing project or to create a new one choose hosting as a feature also choose not to rewrite all requests and also provide dist as a public directory because it is going to contain our compiled application to actually compile the app you should say ng build prod localize it is going to create english and russian versions of the application under the dist directory if you would like to build only a specific language version then you can say ng build configuration is production and the name of your locale and once you are done you can deploy your application to firebase then just open a new browser tab and make sure that your application is deployed and both language versions are working just great so that's pretty much it. Don't forget that this uh, tutorial is also available at Localized blog. So you can follow the text instead of video. And also you can find the source code for this tutorial on GitHub. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask them. And I thank you for staying with me today. And until the next time, folks.